Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman. And this is the Lord's Weekend Guide Live. So, Christians do this really uncomfortable thing when it comes to true faith. Um, we try to find it in each other, which shouldn't be so tough. I mean, especially with adults who you can just ask, do you believe this stuff? I mean, we have creeds so that we can express it in a satisfactory manner, in, in, a, in a godly manner. But oddly enough, there is the temptation that we have when it comes to this stuff to find what has to pass for true faith in people that we like, even if they never go to church or can't really explain what they believe or live in gross and unrepentant sin. Still, we are desperate to find some kind of excuse because, well, we like them. But when it comes to the people we, we don't like, well, then let's ignore what they say, ignore the creed that they confess, ignore the church they go to, ignore everything. But the one reason that I am so upset with them in the first place and look at everything through that which is why adults can manage to ask people what they believe and then summarily ignore whatever answer they are given and make up an answer themselves. To be fair, you can make people memorize the right answers. I mean, you could even do something extreme like make people to like pretend to talk in tongues. You can make people do a lot of things but not trust, not believe. And there are all too many reasons to lie about what we believe, which might be why it's so much fun to say to somebody you disagree with and you call yourself a Christian. It's, it's, <laughs> it's why it's sadly so common to refuse to take somebody's word for what they believe. But say there is this true living faith, though, in somebody who can't talk yet and watch a whole bunch of Protestants lose their mind. Say that a baby can have true and living faith. People get real upset because they can't say that themselves. Here's the thing. I don't care. It's a freeing thing. You should try it. In the large catechism, Luther writes, Further, we say that we are not so much concerned to know whether the person baptized believes or not. For on that account, baptism does not become invalid, but everything depends on the word and command of God. Everything depends on the word and command of God. Not just word, like a magic spell that if we say the right words, we can, can somehow force the universe into doing what we want, force God into letting the right people into heaven, at least the right people that we think, but word and command. This is God working his will through right order. See, he wants to give you this gift, and here is how he will do it. He will take some water, he will take his word, he will baptize. And the wonderful thing then about baptism is that it's not about you at all. It's for you. And then baptism can become the thing that we measure. See, I don't need to try and peer into the heart of an infant or a grown-up. I don't have to try and measure their worth by their works or after they're baptized or their pledge during it. I can look at the word that God gives, the command that he gives, and say, this is where God is working something good. So when my kids were baptized, they couldn't talk yet, let alone espouse their views on the incarnation. But it wasn't up to them. It has always been up to God who commanded that they be baptized and gave us the words that we would do it. See, baptism is just where we can finally find the word of God rightly applied to somebody so we can actually stop judging them. Rather than we can ask this, does God actually want this person saved? Yes. Did he do something about it just for them? It's called a baptism. Baptism lets you stop peering into the heart and look to the promises of God. I'm not saying ignore unrepentant sin. I'm not saying ignore false doctrine. You're still allowed to call wrong, wrong. But in baptism, well, there's a chance to call it forgiven. There's a God who wants to call a sinner holy. And there, there we have something to go by that, that God would give to us. It's that we would no longer be judged by our works, but by God's works for us. We would no longer be judged by our response to the faith, but by God's working of it and his keeping it. Uh, we, we can hold to a Holy Spirit who calls, gathers, enlightens, sanctifies, and keeps, and then even see where he's doing it. Baptism saves even kids, even me, even you. <laughs>